Hi, this is Anu and welcome back to my channel. I am so happy you joined me today for yet but another tutorial. Today is a rock and roll tutorial. It is a scarf, more like a shawl because it's really big with skulls and it's kind of fluffy and edgy and cool and fashionable at the same time and it's perfect for Halloween. But truly, between you and me, I wear skulls all year long. I don't wait for Halloween to wear skulls. Some people love them, some people are offended by them. If you are offended by them, this is not a video for you. But if you are like me and you are enjoying everything around the skull motif and also uh, sugar skulls and all those things, then this tutorial is for you. It is beautiful. Here is my model Maya wearing it for you. It is so big, it is so soft. I love, love, love the yarn that I'm using. It's the Luminosa yarn from Cascade Yarn. And it is mainly black, but it has a little bit of metallic thread in it and shine, but it's not too shiny. The one I chose is kind of that pewter um, chrome color, silver, but you have purple metallic, gold metallic, and copper metallics. Oh, I'll try to put the pictures of the yarn in here. I'm wearing it right now. It is so soft, but I might get very warm very fast because it's really, really beautiful. I'll put the content of the yarn, um, but with all the content, it is super extra soft. I will put substitution yarn of other kind of yarn that would work too in the info box down below. I hope you're all doing well. I know we are going to, some of us are going to be quarantined during this Halloween and, and it stinks, it totally stinks. So maybe this will help a little bit to lift your spirits. If you are quarantined, if you are inside, if you are under a curfew, um, that's my goal. My goal is to entertain you and to bring my passion to you and to make this time um, a little easier if I can. Really, that is my goal and I hope I'm helping. Uh, I am looking forward to continue on this journey with you. I'm thinking of merging my two channels, the knitting and um, crochet together because one, I don't have time to manage two and I think that my knitting um, tutorials get lost in the other channel. Let me know what you think about it. So once in a while I'll do, I'll add a knitting pattern to this channel. I'm thinking about it. So I had made a few skull tutorials in the past. I'll try to link them either here or in the info box down below. I had made a sweater, skull sweater that I love. I had made a granny skull too. And this is, I think, the third thing that I'm creating with this motif. It is really not hard you don't use hard stitches you just need to follow me step by step as i take you through it slowly but surely as usual and you'll see that the only thing you need is basically chain and um, double crochet and that is it and counting and single crochet so chain single crochet double crochet counting and following my lead that is it let me take you there <laughs> If you are not subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? It is totally free. Click on the subscribe button right there and don't forget to click on the little bell right next to it. And then once you click on that bell, click all, and then you will be notified every time I post something new and you will not miss my creations. That would be really sad. <laughs> so the way I created this scarf is by making two panels, two panels of the same thing. Uh, and then assembling them together because when I wear my scarf, I want the skull to be facing the people that are looking at my scarf. And I like to wear it all kind of ways. I like to wear it as a hoodie. I like to wear it just like around and around and around or just like letting it hang. So I want all those positions where I wear my scarf to be with the skulls facing the person that is looking. So, and that is one thing. The second thing is that beautiful border that I am going to show you how to create. What I love about this uh, border is that it looks good for both sides. This shawl is reversible, so there's not a right or a wrong side really. Don't forget to come and check me out on my social media. Here are my addresses. Um, I have a few giveaways actually on Instagram going on last month and this month and probably during the holidays as well. As usual, one of you will be able to win all the material necessary to create this beautiful uh, shawl. To participate, super easy. You just need, of course, to be subscribed to my channel and then to comment in the comment box 
down below and I will contact you to let you know that you are the winner. Super simple, right? And my giveaway are international, so I will find you and send you your yarn everywhere you are in the world. So if you are interested in learning how to create this beautiful shawl, then keep on watching. In the meantime, take care of yourself and happy crochet. See you next time. Mwah. Love you. For this tutorial, you will need five skeins of the yarn Luminosa from the brand Cascade Yarn. It is 52% viscose, 44% baby alpaca, and 4% merino wool. You will also need a 6mm crochet hook, some scissors, and a tapestry needle. Alright, take your 6mm crochet hook and make a slip knot. You're going to proceed by making 75 chains. Once you have your 75 chains, you add 3 extra chains. And then you make a double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook and then another double crochet in the next chain. So the first chain three counts as your first double crochet, and then you made a double crochet in the next two stitches. Chain two, skip two chains, and make a double crochet in the next three chains. So chain two, skip two stitches, and then make three double crochets. Chain two, skip two stitches and make a double crochet in the next three stitches and that is what you're going to do all along your first row i will meet you at the end of your row At the end of your row, you will have 15 groups of three double crochet separated by chain two. Okay, so once you have 15 groups of three double crochets, you end with your last group of three double crochet, and then you chain five and you turn around. So you are now at row two. And the chain five will count as a double crochet plus a chain two. So now you turn your work, you're skipping the first three double crochets from the first row. And in the chain two space, make three double crochets around the chain two. Chain two, skip three double crochets. And in the next chain two space, make three double crochets. I'm sorry, my cat is just singing opera. Chain two. So you have two groups of three double crochet and skip the next group of three double crochets from row one and make a third group of three double crochets around the chain two from the previous row. So you have your first chain five and three groups of three double crochet separated by a chain two. Now you're going to chain 7. You are going to skip two groups of two double crochets and then make three double crochets in the next chain 2 space. Okay, so to resume what you just did, skip two groups of three double crochets, so a group a chain two and a group and in the next chain two space around that space make three double crochets okay so chain two and three double crochets around the next chain two space chain two and repeat chain two and three double crochet until you have a six group of three double crochets separated by chain two after the chain seven you had done. 
once you have six group of three double crochets I will meet you Okay, so when you have six groups of three double crochet separated by chain two, time to chain seven again. And do the same thing we did before. Skip through group two groups of three double crochets and make three double crochets around the next chain two from row one. And you're going to end your row two with three groups of uh, three double crochets separated by a chain two the last group will be right there around the last chain two space from the previous row so you have three groups chain six six groups chain six three groups of three double crochet you're going to end your row with a chain two and a double crochet on top of the first chain three from row one right there and you're done with row two Hello crochet fans, substitute teacher time. It's only Hans' husband. At the end of your row, chain three and turn. Happy crochet, my friends. A little bit of variety to keep you on your toes. Now make two double crochets in the chain two space from the previous row. Chain two. And again, make three double crochets around the chain two from previous row. We are at row three right now. We have two groups of double crochet. Chain two. And again, we make three double crochets around the chain two from the previous row. You have three groups of three double crochet. Now you're going to chain six. skip the next group of three double crochets and you remember that chain seven we had made you're going to make four single crochets around that chain seven from row two chain six again all right so you skip the first group of three double crochet go to the chain two and make three double crochets around the chain two we are going to make five groups of three double crochets chain two go to the next chain two from the previous row make a group of three double crochets chain two go to the next chain two three double crochets chain two go to the next chain two and another group of three double crochets chain two and yet another group of three double crochets in the chain two from previous row so in total you're going to have one two three four five groups of three double crochets after the last chain six we had made now you're going to chain six again and you're going to repeat what we had done on your first skull to the second so you're going to go around the chain seven and make four single crochets chain six skip the next group of three double crochets make three double crochets in the next chain two chain two another group of three double crochets in the next chain two chain two and you're going to end your row with a three double crochets when you had your chain five at the beginning of la the last row so now you are done with row three chain five turn your work around and we are going to tackle row four skip three double crochets make a three double crochets in the chain two chain two and another group of three double crochets you will have two groups of three double crochets at the beginning of your fourth row and 
and then you're going to chain six. For row four, you're going to go in each and every one of these four single crochets we had made at row three. And you're going to make in that first single crochet of the four, you're going to make a double crochet right in that first single crochet. Right there. And then chain one. In the next single crochet, make a double crochet. Chain one. In the next single crochet, a double crochet chain one and another double crochet you have four double crochets separated by a chain one those are going to be the teeth of your skull teeth and chin chain six again skip the next group of double crochets what you're going to make now is four groups of three double crochets separated by a chain two and that will be the group in between your two skulls we have one skull on the right and one skull on the left of your work so our work will have one skull on the right one skull on the left and uh, we will exactly repeat the same thing we did on the right skull on the left skull um, so those two skulls right now for row four will be separated by four groups of a um, three double crochet so you have two groups of double crochet to begin with your six chains and then you have those double crochets separated by a chain one then you're going to have four groups of double crochet and you're going to repeat chain six make your double crochet chain one four times chain six and you're going to end this uh, fourth row with two groups of three double crochet then you're going to chain two and you're going to double crochet on top of the chain three from the previous row and you're done with your fourth row chain three turn around we are at row five the chain three will count as your first double crochet make two double crochet around that first chain two chain two and make another group of three double crochet in the next chain two from the previous row and then you know it you're going to chain six again now you are going to count two stitches from the chain six we had made so from the double crochet from the previous round you count two or you count four stitches four chains and in the fifth chain you make a single crochet and then in the sixth chain two so you have two single crochets before your double crochet from the previous row and then you're going to make a single crochet on top of the double crochet a single crochet around the chain and continue like that a single crochet on top of the double crochet a single crochet around the chain twice more on top of the double crochet around the chain and on top of the double crochet and then you're going to take the two next chains and make a single crochet in it so the next chain after the double crochet make a single crochet in it right there that's one and two and then you're going to chain six again as usual you're going to skip the first group of three double crochet and make a group of three double crochet in uh, the next chain two repeat twice more you're going to have three groups of three double crochet separated by a chain two in between your your skulls for row five so this is what you're going to do so you have your chain six you have your two single crochets and all your single crochet i just show you to how to do on top of double crochet and around the chain one then you're going to have three groups of three double crochets in the middle and repeat for the second skull chain six grab two single crochet from your chain do the same for one skull then at the end then the first then you're going to end your row five with two groups of uh, three double crochets and for row six you're going to chain five and turn around all right we are at row six you're going to make a group of three double crochets in the first chain two from the previous row and then right away you're going to chain six so we're going to have one group of double crochet at the beginning of your row six 
Row 6 is a little bit of a tricky one, so get ready, it's not hard, you just have to pay attention. Chain 6, as usual. And then you're going to make a single crochet in the four single crochets, four first single crochets you had made at row 5. One, two, three, and four. Then you're going to chain five, skip three single crochets, and then single crochet in each and every one of the four next single crochets. Super easy, right? What you're going to do now is create the orbits. That's the nose there. Let's create both of the eye orbits for your skull. So for this step, pay attention, you're going to turn your work around as if you were done with your row. You're not. <laughs> and you're going to chain 10. So you have the wrong side of your work facing you right now. Chain 10. And single crochet around that chain five we had created for the nose. And then chain 10 again. So that's one orbit created. That's your eye socket. And then chain 10 again. And then you're going to slip stitch right at the base of the first single crochet. Right there, slip stitch. Now time to turn your work around again, back with the right side facing you. And then now around the chain 10, you're going to make eight single crochets. There you go. Now go to the next orbit, to the next uh, chain 10, and again, just like that, we make eight single crochet around the chain 10. And that is as hard as it gets for this skull pattern. There you go. Again, slip stitch at the base of your first single crochet. right in that stitch right there and then chain six look how cute it's beginning to look like a skull doesn't it all right so chain six and as usual you're going to skip the first group of three double crochet and you're going to make three double crochet in the chain two from the previous space somebody's at the door my fierce guard dog chain two and make another group. So you're going to have two groups of three double crochet in between your skulls for that row six. You're going to have one group of uh, three double crochet, then you're going to have your skull, then you're going to have two groups of three double crochet, and then repeat for a second skull. Exactly the same thing you did for the first one. So chain six, and then make four single crochets, chain five, Skip three stitches. Single crochet four again. And turn your work around. Chain 10. Slip stitch in the chain 5, chain 10 again, slip stitch at the base of the first single crochet you had made. Now don't forget to turn back your work around, make 8 single crochet around each of your chain 10.
and slip stitch at the base of the single crochet, chain 6. And to end your 6th row, you're going to skip the last group of 3 double crochet after your chain 6. Make a group of 3 double crochet in the chain 2, chain 2 and double crochet on top of the first chain 3 from row 5. You're done with row 6. For row 7, you're going to chain 3. It will count as your first double crochet. Turn your work around. And this is what your work will look like. How cute is it? Seriously though. Oh my gosh, if you like skulls like me, this is such a beauty. And the yarn is so perfect for it too. It's black, but it has that shiny silver through it. I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so we are at row seven, chain three. That will count as your first double crochet. Make two double crochets around the chain two space. And then chain two. And now we're going to, for the first time, make a three double crochet around the chain six. Right there. And then we are going to chain six. All right, so now we're going to make a slip stitch in each and every one of the single crochets we had made, eight on each side of the orbit. So 16 slip stitches in total on top of each and every one of the single crochets. All right, let's do 16 slip stitches. Find the first single crochet you had made and slip stitch in it. 16 times in total. First in the eight first single crochets and then on the eight other. I will meet you once you have 16 slip stitches. Try not to do it too tight. Try to be a little loose with it because you are going to have to single crochet in some of them in the next row. Here you go, 16 slip stitches. Oh yeah, serious skull going on there. Once you have 16 slip stitches, you're going to chain six again. This time you're going to make three double crochets around the chain six from the previous row, from row six. Chain two, make a three double crochet around the chain two from the previous row. That's two groups of three double crochet, chain two, and then you're going to make a group of three double crochet in the chain six from the previous row. That means that you will have three groups of three double crochet in between your skulls. Okay? And then you're going to do for the second skull exactly the same as for the first, which means chain six. 16 slip stitches, chain six. I will meet you after the chain six. Once you have your six chains, you're going to make three double crochets in around that chain six. You're going to chain two. You're going to make another group of three double crochet in the last chain from your row. And you're done with row seven. Awesome, moving along, moving along. And now we're going to tackle row eight. All right, then for row eight, chain five and turn your work around. Go to the next chain two space, make three double crochets. Chain 
chain two skip the next group of three double crochets and make a three double crochet around the chain six from the previous row then you're going to chain six now you're going to skip the first two slip stitch you had made and you're going to single crochet in the next uh, 12 stitches so six from one orbit and six from the next in total you skip the first two stitches and the two last stitches of the 16 slip stitches from the previous row so 12 single crochets in total six done and six more Once you have 12 single crochets, you chain six. Around the chain six from the previous row, you make a group of three double crochets. Chain two, make three more groups of three double crochets. One, two, and the last one will be around the chain six from the previous row. So in between your two skulls, now you will have four groups of three double crochet. The last one being around your chain six from the previous row. And you're going to repeat for the second skull. So you're going to chain six, skip the two first slip stitches and make 12 single crochets in total. Skipping the two last slip stitches as well. And you're going to end your row with two groups of three double crochet one around the chain six and one around the chain two space you're ending your row by chaining two and double crochet on top of the first chain three and for row nine you're going to chain three and turn your work around chain three will count as your first double crochet make two more double crochets in the chain two space from the previous row chain two Make another group of three double crochet and that's two groups of three double crochet chain two and your third group will be around the chain six so you're beginning your ninth row by making three groups of three double crochet separated by a chain two and what do you know chain six again and for this we're going to skip again the two first uh, single crochet and you're going to single crochet eight. Then you're going to chain six. The top of your skull. And for this row, you will have five groups of three double crochets in between your skulls. The first one being around the chain six, last one too being around the chain six. And then you're going to repeat for the second skull. So doing chain six, skip the two first single crochet, making eight single crochet, chain six. And you will end your row nine with, as for the beginning of your row nine you will end with three groups of three double crochet and then turn this is what your work will look like super cool i love it i will meet you at the end of your row nine for row 10 chain five and turn around and we are going to begin with a few groups of three double crochets as usually here is one here is two. Two, and here is the third one. So you still have three groups of three double crochet to begin your tenth row. And then you're going to chain six. And this time you're going to only take four single crochet. So again, skip the two first one and then make four single crochets in total. This is the top of your skull. 
almost done with the skull pattern. So four single crochets and then chain six. And then we're going to make six groups of three double crochets separated by a chain two, the first and the last one being around a chain six. That is going to be in between your two skulls and for the second skull you do the same. Chain six, four single crochets, chain six. And you end your row 10 with three groups of three double crochets separated by a chain two, then chain two and a double crochet on top of the first chain three you had made. For row 11, you chain three, you turn around, you make two double crochets in that chain two space and then you make three more groups of three double crochets so you will have four groups of three double crochets to begin that 11th row i am so sorry about the lack of focus on my lens i have no idea what happened there the last group of those four groups will be around your chain six all right so you begin with four groups of uh, four of three double crochets here they are oh my god i know can you make it focus anyway then you're just going to chain two this time you're going to chain two go straight so skip the four single crochets from the previous row and go to the chain six and make a group of three double crochets so this row will just be a row of three double crochets separated by a chain two so continue now you actually closed you're closing the top of your skull motif so now make a bunch of groups seven groups in total of three double crochet separated by a chain two the last three double crochet of the seven group will be in around a chain six for your second skull and then you repeat doing exactly the same thing so three double crochets in the chain six chain two go to the next chain six and do another group of three double crochet so we have 15 groups of three double crochet at the end of your 11th row and you end your 11th row with three groups of three double crochets and then you turn and we will tackle the 12th row and the 12th row is, will be a row of three double crochets. So you're just going to begin your row by chaining five and then making uh, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in each and every one of the chain two spaces. At the end of your row 12, you still have 15 groups of three double crochets in total as we had at the beginning. And this is the pattern. So you could do the pattern with continuing and having two skulls, one on each side of your scarf. In that case, you would repeat rows one to 12 over and over and over again. I wanted to alternate. So for row 13, I actually had placed my skull in the middle. I had seven, I began my row with seven groups of uh, double crochets and I skipped the two middle ones right there and then I had six groups of um, uh, three double crochets and I ended my row with a chain two and a double crochet to end the row. So what you are going to do for the next 12 rows is exactly following the skull part and then on both of the sides you are going to have as you go up until your row six, you're going to have less and less group of three double crochet on each side of your skull. And then after row seven, you're going to have more and more three double crochet groups on each side of your skull. But the basic skull pattern is the same. So you can either do that or you can just do all just only skulls on each side of your scarf whatever you would rather do of course the written pattern will be on my blog very soon no worries so this worked for me i had about 60 rows in total and i had three alternated pattern of the two and then one middle skull and i liked it just like that so for this shawl you will need two panels so repeat uh, row 1 to 60 once again exactly the same thing and we're going to assemble those two panels together 
When you assemble your two panels together, make sure that all the skulls are going in the same direction because you want the skulls to be facing you and the person that is looking at you when you wear your scarf and not having upside down skulls on one side and straight on the other. And that is the reason why we're doing two panels and not just one long strip. So once I was done with both of my panels, I just put them both with the skulls looking straight at me and the wrong side facing me. I just uh, slip stitched actually um, the border one stitch with the next. The way I slip stitch though is first by taking the one that was closer to me from the panel that is closer to me and the part of the V stitch that was further away from me from the panel that was further away from me. Let me show you and try to zoom and try to be in focus to show you. You can very well um, assemble with a tapestry needle you know i like to assemble with crochet i don't like sewing too much so the most important part is making sure that your skulls align they're all looking in the same di direction uh, with the skull the part of the skull up and then the mouth down if that makes any sense and then you're going to assemble stitch to stitch Again, taking the part of the V-stitch that is closer to you from the panel that is closer to you. Passing your hook through it. Go to the second panel further away from you, taking the loops of the stitch that is further away from you too. And passing your crochet hook, yarning over all the loops on your crochet. Do it again. See the part of the V that is closer to you the part of the V that is further away from you, yarn over and through all the loops on your hook. And that is what you're going to do, matching stitch to stitch all along the two panels of your scarf. And that will make for a beautiful seam, just like that. Just the way we like it, seamless. Now you have one long piece and we're going to, you could leave it like that, of course, if you wanted. We are going to make a border. So this time with the right side of your work facing you, you're going to join at the bottom of your scarf with the same six millimeter crochet hook and the same yarn joining. And then I would like to make a border of single crochet all around the four sides of my long rectangle. And the way I'm going to do it, you see I'm coming from the side of the scarf at the bottom of one of the long sides of your scarf and I'm picking up two single crochets per row really. So I have two single crochets around the chain from the side, there you go, and then two single crochet around the chain three or the double crochet that I had. So two double crochets per row picked up all along the long side of your scarf. This is the first part of your border, just making it more neat and the single crochet is perfect for that. So two single crochets around the chain three, two single crochet around the chain two, two single crochet per row. And I will meet you at the corner, I'll show you what to do. So you picked up single crochet all along, this is what your work will look like. And you have reached your first corner. Here you go, you are at the corner. You're just going to chain one and then begin the upper part of your work. You are the top of your work. So you did one long side. Now it's one of the shorter side. And this side will be easier because you are just going to single crochet on top of each stitch. So single crochet on top of each of the double crochets and then two single crochets around the chain two. And then again, single crochet on top of each of the double crochets. So it's two single crochet in the chain two, 
and then three single crochet one on top of each of the double crochet and that's going to be the narrow upper part of your scarf still picking up single crochets all around for that first round of your border and I will meet you up once you are done with that first round of single crochet. Make sure you pick up the same amount of single crochet on each side of your scarf. And then when you reach the first single crochet you had made, you're going to slip stitch in it. And we're going to begin the second round of your border. The second round will be a round of single crochet all around, chain one and single crochet in the same stitch, but take the front loop only. You're going to only single crochet in the front loop only because this border will be worked in two, two parts, the front and the back part of the border, and then we will assemble it together. We will, it will make for such a nice finishing touch and it will look so neat and so beautiful. I think the border adds a lot for this skull scarf and it will make your border look good no matter from what side your work of your scarf you are looking, the front of the or the back. Since you're wrapping it around you, I like both of the sides to look as neat, the front, the right side of your work and the wrong side of your work. And this is the kind of border that I love to do. So did you see right there those little stitches in the back? That will be for the second side of the border. Right now we're just single crocheting all along that second round in the front loop only and leaving the back loop untouched. At the end of round two slip stitch with the first single crochet you had made chain one and let's tackle round three we're crocheting in the round right now and this time you're going to do a, a round of single crochet taking the whole stitch so regular single crochets all around and now it's just a matter of how wide you would like your border to be i had six rounds in total of single crochet now don't forget that whenever you reach a corner in that chain you had made from the previous corner you do a single crochet in that chain and then you chain one Anyway, so I made six rounds of single crochet and at the end of my sixth round, when I liked the way it looked, I fastened off and I was done with the front part of my border. Now, do you remember those back loops that we had left untouched at the first round? when we joined, when we made at actually at the second round. That was the second round and we had left the back loop untouched. Now you're going to have that side, the wrong side of the border you just created, but the little back loops facing you and you're going to join. And you're going to repeat around two to six, making single crochets in each and every back loop you had left and don't forget to chain one in the corner stitches and i will meet you once you have six rows in total so this side of that border should match the other side of the border it's kind of like a sandwich border that you're creating and we're going to assemble the two sides together so just like that no matter how you wear your scarf you're going to have the right side of the border facing you so pick up all your single crochets, make five rounds in total since you have the first one already. And yeah, I will meet you at the end of your sixth round. All right, so at the end of your sixth round, do not fasten off. Now we have two borders facing each other, all right? And what we're going to do to assemble, you can put all your loose tails in between, sandwiching it in between. And then we're going to assemble by single crochet through both of the stitches from both of the borders you just created. So here you go, you finish. You can take your stitch marker away. I like to have a stitch marker when I work in the round, just so I know where my um, um, round begins and ends. Matching stitch to stitch, corner stitch to corner stitch. I am going to pass my crochet hook through the stitch close to me and the other stitch further away from me. 
and I'm just going to single crochet through both of the stitches all around my scarf super easy and we are almost done my friends this yarn is so beautiful I love the fact that it's black but it has this not too shiny silver kind of almost look like polished chrome or something do you know what I mean I love it very very beautiful yarn but you can make this scarf with any yarn of your choice of course and voila so single crochet all around the four corners of your scarf and i will meet you at the end and voila the only thing left to do is to take your tapestry needle and sew in all the loose tails i like to sew it in between that border right there make a few sewing stitch and then I make a knot and I tighten the knot really tight not too tight so it doesn't crimple and just like that you are done you created this beautiful scarf it's so big that it's almost a shawl it's a scarf it's a shawl and it's so warm it's so soft it's perfect for halloween but i like skulls all year long and i like skulls especially in the winter and i think they're so edgy and so rock and roll and yeah and I think that a neat idea would be also to put some color in your skulls to create more of a sugar skull effect. So take bright colors and take your tapestry needle and decorate your skulls. That would be really cool too. But that's it, my friends. We are done. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial as much as I have enjoyed creating it for you. I really like this stitch and I really like that border that we created, which gives the finishing touch and the really, really nice, neat uh, finishes that make this scarf look so, so professional. Look how beautiful. Absolutely love it. And it frames so well those skulls we created. All right, I'll see you next time. In the meantime, happy crochet. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. See you next time. Hi, this is Anne. Oh my God, I'm hyper. Calm down, Anu. <laughs> it is, wow. It is um, the, what I, uh, um, what else can I tell you? Udo media, media. Wow, I am confusing. <laughs> You get the gist of what I want to say. <laughs> see if I make myself any clearer. Voila. Two. <laughs> and no. Oh, j'ai chaud. Oula. Oh. Gosh darn it. I love it so much. Um.